j'aurai le grand bonheur de tenter de résumer. I uh, will uh, first try and summarize, uh, try and summarize uh, this uh, uh, conference, but it's so I'm not sure how I'm going to uh, do that. Uh, but I would like uh, to uh, then uh, give the floor to Laura Petrovskowski, who is uh, the uh, president of Forest, and. Uh, uh, she will uh, also share with us, uh, I'm sure, some uh, elements uh, uh, to um, give us uh, uh, maybe not a, a full conclusion, uh, but uh, a transition into our conclusion. And then I will uh, give the floor uh, to um, uh, Remy Ryu, uh, CEO IFD, for some concluding remarks. And uh, we want this conference uh, to be held regularly uh, for this first edition. Uh, we did not have time to address all of the issues because it's such a broad subject. But uh, in uh, the uh, subsequent sessions, uh, we will be able to focus on more scientific data and uh, more uh, tangible elements. Au sortir de cette journée, sachez que now, as we are reaching the end of this conclusion, uh, the uh, video of uh, this conference will be available in the coming days. And we also want uh, to uh, make sure that the minutes of uh, this conference uh, will be published in 2022. Uh, it's a way for us uh, to uh, keeping in touch with you. What we started today uh, is not over. Uh, we still have uh, some work to do together. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know uh, if there's a jingle that has been planned, but I would like uh, you to uh, have a look at our word cloud because we're reaching the end of uh, our conference. And uh, with this uh, word cloud, we can see uh, the keywords. I can see that partnership and cooperation are right in the middle. I can see uh, that uh, throughout the day, uh, we uh, took up to this challenge uh, to uh, highlight our willingness to collaborate, to work together, to make sure that human rights are a shared agenda and no longer a specific agenda. La notion de la I know that the notion of uh, accountability or responsibility came up a lot uh, because there's so much at stake. And uh, if we uh, do not gauge uh, uh, the, um, account our accountability, uh, uh, or if we do not gauge uh, the uh, threats uh, that we are facing, uh, this could be uh, threatening future generations. In all of this, there's one element that I would like to highlight. It's uh, that of consistency. Uh, we wanted to bring together diverse uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, you listen to researchers, uh, uh, public uh, bodies, uh, representatives, uh, uh, civil society uh, actors, uh, um, as, uh, development banks, and also journalists. And so uh, people with different backgrounds, uh, but we uh, tried uh, uh, to uh, have uh, some sort of a consistency in our discussions and uh, in our dialogue of, uh, between cultures, our universal dialogue, uh, we can find, I'm sure, a way of working in a consistent way. If you will, we're, we're going to um, uh, initiate a new science, uh, saying that all of this uh, needs to be seen uh, with a much more holistic approach. I would like to conclude with a theme that's very dear to my heart, interculturality. And uh, I just uh, want uh, to thank AFD. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, inviting uh, to invite me. I left Mali, where it's uh, 30 degrees, to come to Paris, 3 degrees. But AFD understood uh, that uh, what we shared today does not just apply to the global south or uh, the north, but it's uh, universal. And we can do this uh, through intercultural dialogue. And I am uh, I quite admire this uh, vision by AFD. And I know that this will be at the core of all of our strategies that will emerge from this. Uh, let's give you a round of applause. Thank you very much, Mr. Keita.
I would like to thank those of you uh, who traveled uh, to Paris and uh, all those uh, who've been attending this conference online uh, since this morning. All those uh, who engaged uh, asking interesting questions. And uh, these questions were interesting. And uh, you probably thought uh, that uh, these uh, questions uh, were coming from me. But no, it was coming from uh, this tablet, uh, from uh, those who followed us online. So I am not going to um, go any further in my conclusions. And now, if you'll allow me, I would like to uh, uh, call to the stage Mrs. Uh, uh, Pietrikovsky de Oliveira, and uh, then uh, we will uh, give the floor uh, to uh, our CEO. Hello, um, good afternoon, uh, good evening in France, uh, and uh, here is good afternoon. We are still uh, early in the day. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the invitation to present our ideas in this important debate. Talking about human rights in the current context is not an easy task, not only because of the complexity of the topic, but because of the progress and framework that have been built over the past decades with much social and political struggle are at risk. Today, being here as a representative of Foros, which is a network made up of organizations representing civil society worldwide, I would like to share some thoughts to add to the calls to action that we have heard today. All of us here in various roles, we are all part of the construction of these rights and the struggle to uphold them all around the world. In Foros, we fight daily for the respect of human rights to become a reality. We are vigilant guardians of the existing achievements. Forus represents a segment of society that is closely connected to defend and to the implementation of the human rights framework in all the depth and in the uncompromising defense of a broad and radical democracy. And this is desperately needed. The bankruptcy of the current development model is expressed especially in the energy, climate and food crisis and in recent years, the COVID-19 health crisis and in the deep crisis of the political system of the so-called modern democracies. In fact, something rotten is spreading in the modern bourgeois democracies that does not seem to have a quick and painless solution. The death of democracies is being observed and announced as a civilizational wake-up call. Nation states are incapable of mediating the diverse interests of society, being overwhelmed by the interests of large economic conglomerates. These have accumulated more and more power to influence political and economic process. The result is the reduction of the role of state, the privatization of public goods, even life itself as an unsatisfactory solutions such as public-private partnership programs, a formula advocated by multilateral financial agencies. We are witnessing the era of total corporate power over local, national and international governments. We see democratic processes being undermined by the economic logic, generating unemployment, successive laws of rights won over decades of struggles, unpunished, unpunished violation of human rights, forced migration caused by climate crisis and wars, among others. The countries that experience, experienced social democracy after a violent Second World War and that largely inspired democratization and the incorporation of human rights into development have in recent years begun to cut social rights, promote austerity policies, closed borders without being able to address widespread discrimination. We cannot forget to highlight how this economic logic, together with the rising of the extreme right all over the world, are impacting the nature, indigenous people, livelihood, who are the true guardians of the remaining forests in our planet.
as well the fight of the black population against discrimination and racism. The criminalization of these people and their movements are part of the tragic logic where market and its invisible hands is what matters. We must fight for the right of nature and for the respect for diversity in all levels. The logic of security comes at ex the expense of freedom and equality. This phenomenon is now repeated with the health crisis. The widening of inequality is tragically visible in the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Rich countries close themselves off, monopolize vaccine production, and do not act in solidarity. In this context, international agreements such as Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the 2030 Agenda should anchor the implementation of human rights do these agreements actually represent a progression in the implementation of these rights? Let's see. The United Nations Conference on Development on Environment in 92 was important milestones for governments on environmental policy and revealed a key international policy agenda for the decade ahead. From there on, a series of global conferences were held with the aim of deepening and committing countries and peoples to a new framework of rights and a new logic about the meaning of development. In this period, the UN still enjoyed the fact global political trust, thus allowing the convening with legitimacy of several high-level international meetings after Rio 92, which had the human rights framework as the basis of their approach. There was a favorable political environment as long as the debate about who would pay for the transition of the, de of the development model was not on the table. As a matter of fact, this is one of the issues that has been holding up all the negotiations restricted restructuring restructuring the institutions and redefining the actors who decide in the international fora to this day. In 2000, with the launching of the Millennium Development Goals, and after the beginning of the new cycle of conferences review, the signs of fatigue of the system become evident. The UN as, as an institution began to lose its political power and legitimacy. These became, became evident over time by the low level of commitment from governments and the lack of investment by the system itself to make the negotiations yield effective results. The ensuing financial crisis contributed to weaken it further. Since then, both the United Nations system and nation states represented there have gradually lost strength and vigor. As a result, the agreement and treaties have remained more in the realm of discourse and few have been effectively implemented. Even more rarely have uh, there been any consequences for promises and commitments that were not kept. Social movements and many civil society and analysts warn since the beginning of these conferences about the urgency of the new international financial architecture, a new governance and more social responsibility of the Bretton Woods institutions and the World Trade Organization. They warned about the need for an evaluation of the social and environmental impacts of the liberalization of investments in all places on the planet and that it was essential to seek new development models based on sustainability, a profound change of the new liberal economic vision. Given this context, one of the main challenges that permeate the construction of 23rd Agenda concern to the weakening of public power, either nationally or within the framework of the multilateralism. Companies are not only invited to the table, they are also asked to come with financial solutions. But all too often, these do not act sufficiently in favor of sustainable development. On the contrary, at the end of the day, uh, they aim for profit rather than sustainability, for the short term rather than a long term vision of harmony between people and, and planet. The state's power 
is undermined and its legitimacy is attacked. As a result, the field of human rights is suffering enormous losses since the power and the, the legitimacy for these rights to be put into effect for the populations resides in the state. The process that took place in, until Rio plus 20 with all their problems and fragilities resulted in an international framework emerging from the consensus by nation states that values and the protection of rights that cannot be ignored. The, this process have, uh, gave rise to the MDGs, the Millennial Development Goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, the Conference of the Parties on Biodiversity, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and the 23rd Agenda. Although the UN and some governments tried to broaden the discussion through global civil society participation, through new communication technologies and open data uh, to bring organizations and citizens into the debate, what we have is a bottleneck. Agreements are not supposed to be made for a better future of the people, do not reflect the main demands and concerns expressed by the organizations and citizens invited to give their opinion. And any agreement is meaningless if it is not implemented with the effective participation of those impacted and with civil society. At the same time, it must be recognized that on paper, the SDGs represent a, a breakthrough in terms of the commitment of member states to the implementation of the broad scope policies, without which countries will not meet the goals outlined. Even though the global agenda is overly captured by private interests, it is still important to emphasize that the 23rd Agenda is a reference point amidst the serious civilizational and environmental crisis we are experiencing. Finally, I would like to refer specifically to the Financing Common, a process initiated under the leadership of the French Agency of Development. For the first time, over 400 public development banks are coming together to seek common visions to face the health, food and climate crisis, among others. We believe it is crucial it is a crucial initiative because it may be through this initiative that we will be able to enact real change in the pattern of the public policies through the incorporating the framework of rights and democratization. This process can become a unique, exemplary and guiding framework for a new order of multilateral spaces and participating actors are eager to define new paths based on the respect and promotion of human rights. But for this initiative to become a guiding star, it will have to walk and talk about the meaningful inclusion of civil society, of the human rights defenders, and of those who are supposed to, be, to benefit from this public finance, the people on the ground. This is why, as Forus, and with some others who are present here today, such as the International Federation of Human Rights, we commit to continue to push for the adoption of human rights-based approaches in all spaces because we don't only need to be the guardians of existing rights, we all need to be aiming higher and pushing further for better frameworks, because the gap between the words heard in these meetings and the realities on the ground is deeper and darker than ever. Thank you. Merci beaucoup à vous, euh, madame, pour uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, this uh, uh, intervention, and I will use it as a conclusion. Everything has been said about uh, the missions, uh, the assignments, the debates and discussions uh, have uh, nothing more to add. I'd like to thank you uh, for this uh, speech. It's a heartfelt uh, speech. Allow me to thank you uh, for uh, being uh, positive, even though 
although our conclusions were quite uh, dark, but uh, um, uh, for me it was a bit of a worrying trend. I mean, uh, in Paris, and I've noticed that the uh, world uh, is uh, doing badly, but at the end of the day, we have uh, some solutions. And during your intervention, I looked at the themes that were addressed during the day, and I've noticed that in one day, we had uh, fun because we touched upon different topics, uh, freedom of press, uh, human rights, democracy, citizenship, development, security, dignity, artificial intelligence, uh, something that you insisted on, uh, SDGs, climate, migration, civic society, banks, and development stakeholders and actors, and above all, uh, approaches based on human rights. So allow me, uh, if you may, I would like to invite uh, the general head of AFD, but uh, I, a big round of applause to two people who've worked day in and day out to make sure that this session is successful, Sarah Ace and Mr. Farid Lamara. I'd like uh, to congratulate them on their work. And uh, I'd like to congratulate them on their abilities, I mean, to transcend the challenges. So, of course, uh, organization is a daunting challenge, especially uh, at a time uh, when COVID uh, is uh, a reality. Of course, the challenges are high, but solutions uh, will emerge. And uh, it is part of a constructive dialogue. One of the solutions following our uh, discussions, we need a new model for our world. And uh, of course, uh, it will be up to us uh, to build this new model. So we will uh, hear from uh, Mr. Reed you who will conclude. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening to us. Mr. Director General, the floor is yours. Bien, merci. Merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. Monsieur Yacouba Kebe. Mr. Yacouba Kebe, I'd like to thank the scooter qui est là, Monsieur Galay. Mr. Galay, I'd like to thank Yara. I'm very happy to see Yara, the uh, president of Forest. I'd like to thank our colleagues. I'd like to thank uh, Sarah. I'd like to thank all the participants who have uh, taken part in this uh, uh, a conference here at uh, AFD in the premises of AFD. I'd like to thank the people who followed us online as well. I'm very proud of this uh, day. I'm very proud of uh, concluding uh, this uh, day. And uh, there's a sense of urgency. Uh, of course, uh, this was uh, reflected in the discussions, in the conversations. There was, uh, I'm moved because this, this is the first time that that AFD has organized an international conference on human rights and their bonds and links with the uh, challenges and development uh, policies. It might seem odd, uh, especially for AFD, because as you know, AFD has just uh, celebrated uh, it's uh, 80 years birthday. It was on December the 2nd, uh, 2021, so uh, uh, an 80 year birthday. It, uh, on December the 2nd, 1841, so AFD was born uh, uh, in London. Uh, then in Brazzaville, I was in Brazzaville uh, uh, earlier this week, and it was born in Algiers in order to resist uh, the forces that were hostile to democracy, to humanism, the uh, destructive forces the world has uh, never witnessed. So we are deeply attached to this uh, organization, to this uh, House. It is part and parcel of our DNA. And of course, uh, this uh, day of conference is a way of uh, uh, celebrating the uh, 80th birthday. So this is the first time that uh, we've organized such a conference. So it means that uh, this is something that is unprecedented. And if you consider 
the uh, development uh, funding uh, world has been very uh, shy or I, I, I would say very silent regarding a human rights. Quite often it has been considered that human rights were a risk uh, when it uh, comes uh, to implementing the projects. But of course, uh, uh, some safeguards were implemented, rules, standards uh, were established in order to uh, check the execution of projects. So, uh, human rights at the start were not at the part of development. So these two communities, uh, uh, funding development uh, was key, but uh, development funding and human rights uh, didn't go hand in hand in the past, but that's different now. Uh, of course, the situation is changing. Uh, you have uh, diverse, uh, diverse uh, stakeholders. So the situation is changing uh, because of reality. We've uh, noticed uh, that uh, our societies are characterized by uh, disturbances, social and environmental disturbances. So it means that our democracies are more vulnerable across the world, in the north, in the south, I mean, these categories, I mean, do not matter. And uh, we've noticed that human rights have been curtailed, uh, for example, the right to life and uh, uh, living rights, and I think that Arshel Membe has uh, uh, expanded uh, the agenda, talking about uh, uh, humans, uh, uh, talking about uh, non-human uh, uh, issues. Uh, it's part and parcel of a, an emergency. It's a legal uh, emergency. Then allow me to highlight a second reason, the revolution in 2015, the Sustainable Development Goals uh, were implemented. It's, uh, uh, it is similar to the Declaration of uh, Human Rights. We are looking for a common ideal for all peoples, for all nations. We want to live in a world that uh, we all share. So in the world, there's a, a kind of quest, the quest for universality, but we need to take into account the uh, different contexts. And, and in France, bien sûr, vous l'avez peut-être suivi. Of course something that you may have witnessed. The promotion of human rights uh, is part and parcel of our mandate. Uh, it wasn't the case until uh, uh, August the 4th. Uh, Dominique Poitier was with us. Uh, he is an MEP, and the French Parliament voted uh, adopter une loi de programmation. unanimously for a programming law on uh, fighting global inequalities and three objectives, three goals have been assigned as part of this uh, development policy. First, eradication of poverty, combating inequalities, uh, combating food insecurity, education, health, uh, Second, uh, protection of uh, global public goods, uh, protection of the planet. We could have uh, stopped there, but uh, the lawmaker wanted to add a third goal, the promotion of human rights, in particular the rights of children, reinforcing the rule of law and democracy and promotion of francophony. French-speaking culture and as part of the uh, women's diplomacy, the idea is to promote gender equality equality and equality between boys and girls. So we have a third uh, section, and of course it's an honor for us, but uh, of course we are required to uh, make sure that we fulfill these objectives through our development 
actions. Of course, the President of the French Republic, Emmanuel Macron, has made some commitments. On October the 8th in Montpellier, he organized a summit between France and Africa, and he talked with uh, representatives, not representatives, but with uh, stakeholders and actors of uh, African society. And the question of democracy was uh, addressed in the discussions, and the president made a commitment uh, uh, to democracy, i.e. with the creation of an innovation fund for democracy. This was a proposal made by Ashil Membe. And of course, it has to be uh, in sync with our own innovations. So uh, I've talked about the genesis, uh, I've talked about uh, this new context, but there's another uh, question that I would like to raise. I'd like to thank you for your contributions today. Uh, of course, we are still working. We are reflecting upon this uh, new strategic uh, space uh, that is opening up uh, in front of our eyes. It is not simple. It is already uh, occupied by many stakeholders who are fighting for human rights, and we respect the stakeholders, we support the stakeholders, and we finance these stakeholders from time to time. But we need you, of course, in order to build our contribution. What could be our contribution? What could be the contribution of FFD as part of this new agenda? And of course, this contribution should stem from our DNA, and we could add another dimension to our DNA. And I think that it could be a twofold contribution. First, the great ability of our organization to project itself. So 80 years on the side of others, uh, it was the motor of our birthday. It's a radical motor, but it is uh, quite uh, uh, up to the point. It is quite accurate. AFD was born in Africa. And AFD lives in Africa, but across the world. So the strength of AFD, it's the network of experts, engineers, people who are eager to understand societies in which they have to work. And the rights that stem from that. So we had different discussions and conversations. We talked about sustainable development goals. We can notice that in our countries, the situation is flimsy and fragile. Joe Biden, during the summit on democracy that took place yesterday, said that the world is vulnerable. So there are some tremors. Uh, across the world, so it's important uh, uh, to look at different uh, uh, comparative elements. It's important to spot innovations. It's important to fund them. It's important to grasp what uh, these dynamics are all about. And the question of human rights uh, comes from our different countries. But there's a, a movement, a big movement coming from the South. So social justice, climate justice, political justice uh, are demands that are being made by many uh, countries. And if you consider AFD, AFD could contribute even more. So we finance development. Uh, we want to change a society. We want to change reality as it is. We want to change the environment. We want to change the ecosystems. And I think that we need to look at the uh, question of rights uh, from the bottom. So uh, very often, we thought that uh, rights were magic recipes, so, so uh, recipes that we could enforce when there was no environmental and social urgency. Jean-Marie Guénaud, my friend, wrote a book a few weeks ago, and uh, he was the author 
of books uh, about democracy, the invention of democracy as a procedure. But uh, now what is at stake is society. How can we protect? How can we build rights uh, in a a society that is fragmented, that is scattered, that is uh, too individualistic, that is impoverished. So, uh, of course, we need uh, some safeguards and we need to defend uh, the rights in the uh, projects. But there's something that is more interesting, more insightful. How can we make sure that our development actions are nurtured? Um, uh, in a complementary fashion with rights. And we need to do research. We need to use research. We need to use anthropology. We need to use uh, uh, the economy. So uh, rights, I mean, how do they emerge? You need to create a, a, a breeding ground for rights. And we need to, we need to understand uh, our action. We need to analyze our actions in order to promote rights. So having said that, how AFD can address uh, those uh, topics. The President of the French Republic and the Prime Minister have said that AFD will have a different name. So when you change a name for an institution, this is a momentous event. So when you change your name, it means that you change your mandate, your purpose, and there might be different reasons for that. This uh, new law, uh, the, uh, uh, we need to have this uh, new space. We need to occupy this space. So, and uh, so there are lots of words. I don't know if we have the new name of AFD in the cloud of words. I mean, I don't know the name of this. Uh, uh, I don't know the, 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 the new name of our institution, but uh, we have a cloud of words, and this could be a source of inspiration. But I think that uh, this name should uh, entail all of the uh, words that you mentioned. Of course, uh, we worked with the European Commission. The European Commission helped us uh, uh, to do research. A symposium was organized one year ago, or one and a half year ago, and uh, the symposium that took place one and a half year ago uh, has, a direct, has a direct link with the uh, conference that we've organized today, development approach based on human rights and the linkages across different dimensions. So as I told you, we will have been changing our name. There will be a new strategic blueprint that we are currently devising. So we will take into account the message delivered by this conference. We already have uh, quite a few elements to do so. We already have uh, a number of actions that uh, can uh, help us so promote those rights uh, that lead to the establishment of these rights. Uh, there is also everything that we uh, do uh, with the CSOs. Uh, over the past few years, uh, uh, we've uh, funded over 60 million projects uh, directly related to human rights. We uh, also had uh, the uh, support from uh, of the uh, uh, Equality Generation Forum uh, that was held in July, uh, July 2020, I think. So this is a, an essential notion uh, for uh, gender equality as well. We uh, launched uh, also uh, our um, uh, support fund uh, for uh, feminist uh, uh, organizations, and we've already uh, funded uh, a uh, number of uh, organizations uh, worldwide, 55 projects, representing 91 million euros. 
And we also work uh, on the enhancement of uh, governance, uh, the rule of law, uh, democracy, citizen part uh, participation, and the media. Well, uh, citizen uh, participation, I think it's a, uh, I don't really like that word. It sounds uh, too um, uh, scientific, too mechanical. But in any case, we are developing um, policies uh, with a number of countries, and uh, those are particularly uh, relevant in order to address uh, the question of uh, human rights uh, in various fields. And more broadly set, uh, speaking, it's uh, also the whole uh, of uh, AFD activity uh, through uh, water, uh, projects, um, infrastructure, uh, job creation. Well, we, we push it down uh, to uh, the right, as I often say. This is our uh, development approach uh, to have that uh, discussion and uh, also related uh, to a legal uh, framework. Uh, we have many examples, actually, of uh, development actions uh, leading to a change in legislation and creating rights. Uh, so maybe we could do this in a more systematic way. I'd like to conclude uh, by announcing a few initiatives that are even more tangible and that will be uh, supported by AFD. And this can be seen as uh, the uh, proof uh, of uh, our resolve uh, and commitment. And I would like to thank all of our colleagues who are supporting these projects. Uh, with CSOs, uh, we will uh, keep up our work. Uh, we'll also launch uh, our uh, three-year uh, project, uh, uh, Freedoms, uh, exclamation mark, uh, support uh, to uh, human rights advocates. Uh, next year, we'll also launch a uh, call for project. Uh, to uh, promote uh, innovative projects uh, for uh, environmental um, advocates, uh, environmental activists. We know uh, that uh, the, uh, situ their uh, uh, condition is uh, very dangerous at the moment. Uh, uh, some of them uh, lost uh, their lives uh, in their fight. Uh, and uh, so uh, they need our support. We also uh, have the project of uh, creating uh, various uh, fora, uh, including uh, CSOs, uh, public institutions uh, in uh, partner countries, uh, and uh, with the uh, technical uh, support uh, from uh, uh, technical uh, cooperation agencies uh, from the EU, um, among whom uh, Expertise France and their uh, southern partners, uh, uh, de public development banks, and uh, the uh, private sector with Propaco. I think that Mrs. Bachelet, among other uh, speakers, uh, mentioned it. Uh, we created uh, this uh, coalition of uh, finance in common. And now we have uh, 530 uh, development banks uh, that are part of it worldwide, 15% uh, of uh, global investment, which is public. And I think that uh, uh, we have uh, 530 uh, heads of uh, public uh, financial institutions who uh, know, I think, uh, what we are discussing today. And uh, they uh, do not necessarily uh, have all of the details, uh, and we did not uh, before our conference today. And uh, they do not necessarily have uh, all of the tools. Uh, they might be facing, facing tensions. Uh, but I think that there is a level of uh, availability from these institutions uh, to um, give uh, more space uh, to these issues. Uh, and I think that there is a, a unique ability to connect uh, players, uh, to connect SDGs and uh, the various agendas, uh, and uh, to better promote uh, human rights. So I don't know um, to what extent uh, this will um, uh, come through. But I think that uh, the World Bank uh, attended uh, the uh, forum, and uh, Yara is in uh, Brazil. There's also uh, the uh, Minas Gara Development Bank. Uh, all of our friends uh, from the uh, public development banks uh, in uh, our partner countries worldwide. So, of course, uh, we need to have that experience ourselves, and then we need to be able to share it, to compare it with us. Allez plus loin to go further. So uh, this is what I wanted to say. 
I would like to conclude, uh, of course, uh, by uh, thanking you all. As Yakuba said, uh, there were over 600 participants to this conference. Uh, I would like to thank my government. Once again, uh, uh, they uh, initiated uh, this uh, change. Uh, they set uh, this uh, fast pace uh, with uh, now uh, the approval by parliament. Uh, this uh, started uh, in uh, 2018 uh, with the uh, French strategy called uh, Human Rights and Development. Uh, and uh, this uh, was uh, recognized uh, by uh, a uh, legislative uh, framework. I would like to thank also the European Union on the uh, 17th and 18th of February uh, we'll have uh, the uh, summit uh, between Africa and the EU under the uh, French EU presidency uh, this was mentioned uh, by uh, the French president in his uh, press conference yesterday and uh, there will also be uh, the uh, programming of uh, the new uh, financing uh, instrument uh, for uh, the next seven years and so this is, uh, we need to discuss all of this now uh, to see uh, how the, uh, what the Team Europe can do. Team Europe means uh, the uh, European Commission as well as all of the uh, development elements uh, in uh, EU, uh, experts, uh, expertise uh, agencies, five, etc. I would like to thank also the community of uh, academics, uh, the various um, distinguished researchers that were present today. Uh, they are really the foundation of that action. And uh, without them, uh, we would be uh, making uh, many uh, errors. And um, uh, we uh, need to uh, gain as much expertise as possible uh, to uh, enhance uh, these uh, fundamental rights. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, we're very proud of the uh, message uh, that uh, was shared uh, to us uh, by uh, Michle, Michel Bachelet in the opening ceremony to this uh, ceremony. And this goes to show uh, the strength of her commitment. And uh, I think that this uh, uh, guided us uh, throughout the day. I would like to thank also uh, the uh, International Federation for Human Rights. Uh, which will be uh, celebrated uh, its uh, uh, 100th uh, anniversary next year. And uh, uh, maybe uh, we could uh, celebrate this together um, in any way you want uh, to maybe uh, gauge uh, our uh, progress um, for, uh, the, for tomorrow's world. Uh, Il faut se remettre à... uh, not uh, the world after, because otherwise uh, that's a bit worrying. So we need to uh, think about this uh, in the long term uh, for the climate and uh, for uh, these uh, human rights as well. Thank you. Thank you once again for your participation throughout the day. Well, I think that there isn't much to add to this. I would just like to say that AFD is looking for a new name. I think that our word cloud could be very useful in this respect. And since we're talking about human rights, I will try and promote my own copyright. And I would like to remind you that solidarity is everyone's responsibility because we are all interdependent. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you to uh, those of you um, who traveled to Paris uh, uh, to uh, have come. And uh, please pray for everyone, uh, because uh, COVID-19 is still there. And uh, be safe. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm sure that we will meet again in a similar forum. Thank you.